Okay, guys, now I want to show you what I think might be the coolest part about Vectory, which is this separate controller instrument that allows us to initiate custom MIDI configurations to use with Vectory so we can use uh, Vectory with any of our control surfaces. This is one of the most mysterious and unknown parts of Vectory. It's also one of the most fun to use, so let's check it out now. Now make sure that you have edit mode active because we need to go into the panel sets uh, tab and reveal this instrument. I'm going to open the side pane now. And then panel sets is the third tab from the left. You see that the panel sets here at top. So this is a lot like the sample loader. By default, Vectory loads with only the Vectory instrument active or visible. Uh, but I can click on this controller and then all of a sudden this pops up and it's this separate controller instrument. Now I'm going to click and drag this down uh, below here and it should snap down there. And then what we'll see is that we have a variety of parameters at our disposal here in terms of assigning MIDI, MIDI uh, incoming MIDI data to the various parameters in Vectory. Now just to start off with what I've found is that on my keyboard, and I'm just using an M-Audio USB 02, it's a very small, very basic uh, kind of MIDI keyboard, if I start with F, I tune down one octave and then I start with F, I can move through the sample select and preset B for the grain resynthesis engine in semitones. It's automatically mapped that way. Uh, so right out of the box you have that setting and those will move in tandem. But now what we want to do is come down to this controller instrument and check this out. We have these two XY grids here that allow us to move both horizontally and vertically. And then we also have a set of controllers over here, A through E. Below this, we have the assignments. So these are the actual parameters that will be altered by the controllers, which are the XY grids and, and the uh, controllers A through E. So let's go over to our uh, MIDI tab in the side pane. To do this, deactivate uh, edit mode. And then in, under the panel sets tab, this will become the uh, MIDI and OSC controls. Now I already have some empty mappings in here, so I'm just going to click on this and delete these. Get rid of those. And then I'm going to make sure that I have my auto button toggled on. What this will do is recognize any incoming MIDI data, and then it will allow me to map that uh, MIDI data to any of these controllers. So let me just uh, tweak this first knob that I have on my keyboard. And you see that as I do that, a couple things happen. You see that it pops up here as uh, CC16. It's on channel 1. But you also see that this box moves around in this grid. Now that's because this already is uh, mapped in here from a previous take that I did of this video. Now this will, I think, initially map to 12 and 13. But since this is mapped to 16, the minute I press this, uh, and a minute I uh, toggle this key, you see that it's moving through there. So what I'm going to do here is reset this to 12 and 13 so that this is no longer mapped and then I want to show you how to use these controls. Now this control A is mapped to 16 and so this is something that we could use down here as a controller for any of these parameters. Now these include sequencer selection, uh, sample sample selection, so these two boxes, sequencer selection, sample selection, pattern A and pattern B are these two, right, which are the presets for the grain resynthesis engine and then we also have a morph, uh, a morph control option here. So this is the morphing between these two. Now recall that this sounds like this. We can move between these grain resynthesis parameters and really, really start pulling things apart there. So this can be altered by controller B in this case. Uh, sequencer bank is the bank of the sequencer selection. Very useful to map this because you could map this to a knob, for example and then just use that knob to move to, from, uh, from bank to bank as you're going. So you get the idea here. Now there are even things like meter, release time, range, and rotate. These come in uh, handy down here. Meter is a very cool one to, to, uh, to map. I'll show you that later. But for right now, I'm going to set basically everything that is set to be controlled by controller A off so that we can start from scratch. And it looks like I've done that. So now I have controller A being controlled by this knob that I'm playing, which is CC16. And now if I assign any of these parameters to controller A, any time I move the knob, I will be controlling that parameter. So if I move, if I set, say, sequencer select to controller A by clicking on the dropdown and selecting A, then if I come up to sequencer select, it's like, as I move this knob, you're seeing it move through <laughs> the, those different uh, sequences. So let's get this going and give a sense for, get a sense for how this would happen in real time. So I could 
and I'm just I'm just moving this knob. But notice as I move through there, no dropouts, totally fluid. Now another cool thing to do is to come down here to the morph parameter, and if you have a fader of any kind on your on your control surface, and I have a single fader, I can uh, adjust that. And it's already mapped there, I think, because I, I pre-mapped this, but you can see that this is CC24, and if I come into control B and set that to 24, if it wasn't already set to 24, then I could go down to morph and have this be controlled by B. And so now, with the knob, I can control the sequencer selection. And with the fader, I can control the morph setting. So very cool, and that's of course only two parameters that we're mapping. Now another thing that's cool to map is meter, because meter uh, will allow you to kind of jumble up everything rhythmically and start changing the meter as you're going. So if I set the meter to say, let's use a, a second knob here, let's say CC17, uh, I will set controller C to 17, and then I will go to meter and set this to C, get this going. And now keep an eye on that meter. You see that right there? See how it's changing, now, this is a very aggressive move down here, and then I can Sometimes the simplest parameters are the most powerful to use with this. So the XY grids basically work on the same principle. Uh, one control will control the X, which is the horizontal space here, and the second will control the Y, which is the vertical. And then this XY grid becomes the control source, just, just like any of these controllers, but in this case, you have a two-dimensional control that you could use for any of the destination uh, parameters. So this is really an enormously fun way of using Vector. I encourage you to do it. It might not seem like much just to watch me do it on this video, but believe me, once you get going with this, you're going to go nuts because it's so much fun to use. And you can just tear up all sorts of rhythms and do all sorts of interesting stuff. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Some of you have probably seen this before, but uh, I thank you for watching. Hopefully this has uh, increased your enjoyment of Vectory, and I'll talk to you again soon.